And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Command the children of Israel that they bring unto thee pure oil olive, beaten for the light, to cause the lamps to burn continually in the tabernacle of the congregation. And it shall be a statute forever in your generation. The Eternal Light. The National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations make free time available to present The Eternal Light, a program which comes to you under the auspices of the Jewish Theological Seminary of America. Today, in celebration of the festival of Purim, we present A Song for Queen Esther by Morton Wishingrad. Oh, Purim's coming, children, the feast of fun and joy. So let us join in singing, every girl and boy. Sing Esther the queen, sing Esther the fair, sing loudly her virtue, her charm. How Mordecai toiled, how Haman was foiled, how Israel was shielded from harm. Oh, Purim's coming, children, the festival of fun. So lift your voices gladly, come join in everyone. Now it came to pass in the days when Ahasuerus was king that he ordered his seven chamberlains to prepare a great feast in the city of Shushan. Prepare couches of gold and silver. Prepare couches of gold and silver. Dust off our 1,600,000 golden goblets. Royalty is coming. Invite all my relatives. Double the amount of food. Yes, of course, all kinds of food. Ransack my 127 provinces for ducks, hens, capons, pheasants, geese, quail, and pigeons. Poultry, beware! Oh, but it's going to be a party no one will soon forget. Capons, ducklings, cook them well. Geese and quail and pheasants, cook them in a giant pot. Stirred by 80 peasants. Bullets, chickens, fricassee, boiled and broiled and roasted. Cook them in a lovely sauce till they're golden toasted. Quick, be quick, my chamberlains, pies, pastry, brandy, and give each child throughout the land paper bags of candy. <laughs> When King Ahasuerus had finished his little song, he beamed at his seven chamberlains and gave them a large wink. And with a look full of meaning, he said, Tell Queen Vashti I shall want her to put on her royal crown and come before my guests to show her beauty. But Vashti refused to show herself in front of the king's guests, and King Ahasuerus became furious. I am the king. Me, I am the king. Ahasuerus. Chamberlain, how dare she refuse my command? Inexcusable behavior, your majesty. The presumption of the woman. The insolence of the woman. The audacity of the woman. You shouldn't stand for it, your majesty. I won't stand for it. You must defend the honor of the royal name. I will. Why, if the queen refuses to obey the king... The ordinary women will step all over their husbands. Exactly. Majesty. Yes, Chamberlain. Much as I regret to say so... Go on. I must counsel that the time has come... To choose a new queen. Hmm, not a bad thought. Excellently counseled. Uh, Chamberlain, whom have you in mind? Someone beautiful. Oh, good. And someone dutiful. Better. Someone wise and modest ah, and ah. charming. Uh, what's her name? I don't know. Oh. But we'll find her, Your Majesty. Impossible, she doesn't exist. No, oh, but she does exist. She must exist. And since she exists, we will find her. How? 
We'll hold a contest. A contest for the maiden who will be queen to King Ahasuerus. Lovely, lovely, lovely. A beautiful idea. A most ingenious idea. An idea of sagacity and imagination and virtue. Thank you, sire. I shall order your soldiers to go throughout the land. They will be authorized to gather together every eligible maiden in all the 127 provinces of King Ahasuerus. Ruler over Persia and Media. Sovereign of all lands and peoples. From India, even unto Ethiopia. Mighty emperor enough, over... Enough, 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 Chamberlain. The main thing is that the plan is good. Excellent. Hurry. Let's have the royal contest. In Shushan town there lived a girl, there lived a girl. Hadassah was her name. Hadassah was her name. Till it was changed by Mordecai and Esther it became. Till it was changed by Mordecai and Esther it became. Now Esther was an orphan girl, an orphan girl of virtue, grace, and beauty, of virtue, grace, and beauty, who lived with Uncle Mordecai to protect her was his duty, who lived with Uncle Mordecai to protect her was his duty. <laughs> Esther, my dear, it's impossible to hide here any longer. But the soldiers are in the street. Then you must go to meet them. They must not find you hiding. Uncle Mordecai, what will become of me? We have the promise of the king that no one will be molested. I'm afraid. Have faith, my dear. He who led Abraham forth out of Ur of the Chaldees will also watch over you. I want to stay here with you. I want to be with my people. I have no wish to be in any contest. I have no wish to be queen. Is out of our hands now. Esther, be brave. In the name of Ahasuerus, ruler of Persia, I demand entrance into this house. Uncle Mordecai, don't leave me. In the name of the 42 ministers and the seven chamberlains of King Ahasuerus, let me in. Promise me, Uncle Mordecai, that you would stay close by. I promise. Esther, you must promise me something. What, Uncle? Whatever happens, do not reveal that you are an Israelite. Because should the king be displeased with you for any reason, then your people would suffer harm. I promise. Are you the maiden Esther? I am. Hold your face to the light. Ah. In the name of the 63rd Regiment of His Majesty's Royal Legions, I declare you most eligible. Please come at once to the royal palace. Mordecai wept to see Esther go. He followed behind as he had promised. And when the palace gates closed after her, he sighed very deeply. Dear Esther, sweet Esther, they've taken her to test her to see if her beauty is pleasing to the king. To him may she be beautiful, and to her people dutiful. Our hearts will all be very full, if she's chosen queen. It was not an easy contest. There were thousands and thousands of eligible maidens, and the king and his first chamberlain would not leave the judging to other eyes. Day followed day, week followed week, but neither the king nor his loyal chamberlain was satisfied. This one isn't beautiful enough. And this one isn't modest enough. This one simple. This one squints. This one giggles. This one gushes. This one is silly. And this one is stupid. And this one has no manners. This one has too many airs. And this one is too short. This one is too tall. And this one is... This one is... Ah, I think so too, Your Majesty. Mm. <laughs> My dear young lady. Do you address me, sire? I do. What is your name? Esther, Your Majesty. Chamberlain, a most agreeable voice. And a most agreeable manner. Queen Esther. I like that. The two words do go together, don't they? They do, don't they? 
<laughs> I like the sound of it very much indeed. Chamberlain, I have made up my mind. The contest is over. Esther will be my new queen. Queen Esther, Queen Esther, there is no one to better. For her grace and virtue are pleasing to the king. My dear, I find you beautiful. I hope you will be dutiful. Oh, Lord, you have been bountiful. And Esther is my queen. And this is the manner by which Esther the orphan became queen to King Ahasuerus in the month of Tebet, in the seventh year of the king's reign. And the king loved her exceedingly. My dear, what is your opinion on the color scheme of the furniture? Do you prefer blue and silver with the onyx chairs, or do you think gold would be more delicate? You speak up, my dear. I value your opinion. The king had never been more happy in his life. And Mordecai, to whom all these tidings were brought, rejoiced greatly. True to his word, Mordecai sat from noon to night before the gates of the palace in order to see that no harm should come to Esther. And this is how it was that one day, while Mordecai sat reading from a large book, he chanced to overhear two of the king's ministers speaking in a strange language. The uh, Inke is an Apse. Ekje. He is an Ulfe. And an op day. Teresh alpe isn't le ute ime. I may ate ave ing be upe. I may ate ave ing be ushpe around a iriad pay. How hey about a uye it kate? Ekche. Now Mordecai knew all the seventy languages of man, and so to his learned ears the words made sense as follows. Teresh, my good friend, as one minister to another, let me say candidly that our good king Ahasuerus is, uh... Is, uh, what? He's a fool. Well, I grant you that. He doesn't deserve to be king. Well, I grant that also, but uh, who does? Me. You? Why not? Hmm. The idea has uh, possibilities. Uh, what have you in mind? A dagger. Well, that would do it nicely, but it's a uh, risky business. After we take care of Ahasuerus, you proclaim me king, and I proclaim you the king's treasurer. Mm. As I uh, said, the idea has possibilities. I, I might go so far as to say that it has uh, large possibilities. Now, uh, quite by accident, uh, I uh, own a dagger. A dagger of daggers. This dagger, my dear colleague, is so sharp. I ran immediately to the chamberlain and revealed the plot against the king. We bless you, Mordecai. Bless you a thousand times, for the wicked ministers have already been seized, and no harm will befall the king. Esther, my dear. Yes, uncle. I believe you've grown fond of Ahasuerus. I believe I have. He's a little foolish sometimes, but for a king, he's quite lovable. I'm doubly glad now that I was able to save his life. Have no fear. Rest easy in your mind, dear Esther. From now on, there isn't anything can happen. But Mordecai was wrong. In place of the traitorous ministers, King Ahasuerus made a single appointment. Amon, the son of Hamadatha, the Agagite. Your Majesty. Know all men that from this day I appoint Haman to be my first minister. I am Haman, first minister of the realm. Bow down and prostrate yourselves before me. Now Haman was an evil man, the foulest villain in the land. This Haman, foul Haman, the blackest soul of all. But dear children, calm your fears, sigh no sighs and shed no tears. For Haman, foul Haman, did infamously fall. On with our story, Haman is approaching the place where Mordecai sits at the palace door. Bow down, shouts Haman, bow you down before me, for my name is Haman and I alone am Lord. I said bow down, I am your Lord. You are wrong, sir. 
There is only one Lord to whom I may bow down. The Lord our God. Bow down to me and kiss my foot. I cannot. I shall. I am the minister of the king. And I am a servant of God. You've said enough. Your name. What do you wish with me? Your name. People call me Mordecai. Mordecai the Israelite. Mordecai the Israelite. That's all I want to know. Soldiers, sound your trumpets. Haman returns to the palace. Haman, you come at a most inopportune time. My chamberlain is showing me my garments for the new season. It can wait, Your Majesty. Somehow everything that pleases me must wait while everything that vexes is pushed before my nose. What is it, Haman? Sire, I've been examining the royal treasury. Money, money, money. Don't talk to me about money. Talk to my chamberlain. He handles such things. Majesty, I must speak to you. Your treasury is very low. Hmm. Uh, too many parties, eh, Chamberlain? No, I'm afraid so, my king. Well, we'll have to do something. Uh, take away those new garments. I, I can't afford them. No, but, sire, blue and white are such favorable colors for you. You heard, Heyman. We must economize. Very well, Chamberlain. See that our next banquet lasts only three weeks. Your Majesty. Speak, Heyman. What is it? No need to economize. There are Israelites in your kingdom. Yes? We shall tax them. But, uh... We shall tax with a special tax, a tax of 100% upon everything they possess. That means you will confiscate... Everything they possess. And I assure you they won't complain. Really, Heyman? I'll take the small precaution of seeing that they are all dead. Dear me, rather drastic, uh, don't you think? A necessary step, King Ahasuerus. These people plot against your life. They cause unrest in your kingdom. They foment rebellion. They have contempt for your gods and your idols. Your Majesty, we cannot abide difference in our kingdom. Those who are not absolutely like everyone else must be eliminated. Chamberlain, what do you think? I do not like it, sir. Heyman, surely there must be some other way. No other way. Your Majesty has given me his confidence. Believe me, now I act for the good of the kingdom. Every Israelite must be destroyed. Esther, you are exaggerating the seriousness of the news. I wish it were so, Mordecai. But it was told me by my ladies in waiting. It is only court gossip, a wild rumor. Such things cannot happen. Uncle, it was the king's loyal chamberlain who gave the news to my ladies. Haman. Haman is the one. Yes. Oh, swear is my husband, my king. How can you allow yourself to be so deceived? Esther, go to him. To Aswaris? Yes, you must. But no one may go to the king unless the king calls. It is the law of the palace, Mordecai. Whosoever goes before the king without having first been summoned by the king, that person may be summarily put to death. Even the queen. You must chance it, then. I may be killed. If you do not go, your people will be killed. I have no alternative, then. I shall fast. Mordecai, go among the Israelites and tell them that this day shall be the fast of Esther. Beseech them to pray for me even as I pray for them. Wer mir seinen, seinen will, ob er jeden seinen will, was mir tun, tun will, ob er Esther fasted all that day, and in the small houses of Shushan, thousands prayed for her. Finally, while the entire court held its breath, Queen Esther boldly approached the throne of the king. Who is it that comes before the king without being summoned? It is Esther, your queen. Oh, oh, well, 
That's something else again. Uh, Madame, your life is much too valuable to risk this way. I had to come, sire. But suppose I had a touch of indigestion and were in a bad mood. My dear Esther, dreadful things could happen. Unthinkable things. Now, now, why have you come, my dear? I have prepared a banquet, Your Majesty. Oh, capital. Am I invited? It would be no banquet without you. What a pretty speech. When is it to be? Tomorrow evening. Wonderful, wonderful, wonderful. Who else is coming? Anyone I know? If my Lord Haman would honor us with his presence, I would be most happy. Haman, do you hear that? <laughs> Lucky for you, I'm not a jealous man. Invited by the queen herself. Oh, I am deeply flattered, my gracious queen. Then you will come, Haman. Nothing could prevent it, Queen Esther. I am ecstatic with joy. Haman gloated because the queen had honored him. But when he saw Mordecai outside the palace gate, his exultation became an evil thing. What good are the favors of the queen to me so long as this man whom I hate remains alive? I shall take counsel with Zeresh, my wife. And Zeresh, who was as evil as Haman, gave him her wicked counsel. You're absolutely right, Zeresh. I shall build a gallows 50 cubits high, and Mordecai will hang from it. to stop that infernal racket. It's got to so a man can't sleep. Chamberlain, make them stop. Trumpeteers, have done, have done. Thank you very much. Now go back to sleep, Your Majesty. Now what in the name of Persia is that? Uh, Haman has given an order to build a gallows 50 cubits high. Well, tell them to wait till morning. Why does everything happen to me? Stop your hammering. Go home, all of you. Come back in the morning. Much better, Your Majesty. My head. I'm afraid the night is ruined. I simply won't be able to sleep after this. Drink a little wine. No. Perhaps a little walk? No. Uh, Chamberlain, read to me. Very well, sire. I shall read from our daily chronicles. I read, date of six months past. The plot to assassinate the king... Foiled by the Israelite Mordecai. On the morning of the sixth day, the Israelite Mordecai overheard... Uh, wait, Chamberlain, wait. It comes back to me clearly, yes. Uh, this man Mordecai, he saved my life. He did, sire. How did we reward him? Let me see. There is no mention of any reward. Ridiculous. Read further. Oh, I'm afraid, sire, we completely forgot a reward for this loyal subject. No wonder I couldn't sleep. Terrible. Terrible, terrible. How could we be so ungrateful? I, I must remember to speak to Haman about it at Queen Esther's banquet. No, I shan't wait. I'll do something about it now. Chamberlain, strike the gong. <laughs> Haman, <laughs> there's something I meant to speak to you about, but this is Esther's banquet, and so no business. Uh -huh. My dear Esther... Will you sing for us? I'm not in the mood, Your Majesty. Oh, nonsense. Sing something. Something pretty, something gay. You know what I like. Your Majesty, truly, I have no disposition to sing at this moment. I'm a very disappointed king. My chamberlain is disappointed. I am, dear queen. Very well. I sing, my king. My king, I sing, but my heart is cold and sad. Yet since you command, I shall pretend my heart is gay and glad. La, 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 la. Esther. Oh, Esther, my dear, I thought this was to be a happy occasion. Forgive me, but, but I'm filled with sadness. But why? For what reason, my dear? Because orders have been issued to put the people of Israel to death. Those were my orders, Queen Esther. Why trouble your head over affairs of state? Haman is right. Haman is the most wicked man who has ever lived. Oh, my dear Queen, I, I'm at a loss. The Israelites to... never harmed you. 
They ask only for peace. Why won't you let them live? Esther, my dear, there are tears in your eyes. Are there, Oswaris? Oh, my dear, what are the Israelites to you? Your Majesty, they are my people. I am an Israelite. You, Esther? An Israelite orphan who was reared by her good uncle Mordecai. Well, we shall have this order against your people. Did I hear you say Mordecai? You did, sire. Majesty, this Mordecai... He is, is our loyal subject. Oh, no, King Oswaris, he's a traitor. How can you speak so of a good man? I can prove he is a traitor. Hold your tongue, Haman. You cursed liar. Mordecai is the man who saved the king's life. I would have him honored, not slandered. My king, Haman, would have Mordecai hanged. Never. Haman has built a gallows 50 cubits high to hang Mordecai. Not true. If Haman has built a gallows, Haman will hang from it. <laughs> Mordecai, my faithful subject, put on purple robes and garments of silk, and let this time be a time of rejoicing for you and for all the people of Esther the Queen. Oh, Purim's here, dear children, a festival of thanks. So sing and dance with gladness and play your merry pranks. Sing, Mordecai, good sing, evil with should sing, wicked Haman's disgrace. Sing yes to the queen, sing yes to supreme, sing proudly her beauty, her grace. Oh, poor and dear, dear children, clap every hand in glee. And always love this story, which ends so happily. If you would like a copy of today's script, please send your name and address with 10 cents to cover postage and handling to the Jewish Theological Seminary, 3080 Broadway, New York 27, New York. Eternal Light Drama today, A Song for Queen Esther by Morton Wishengrad, was presented in celebration of the Festival of Purim. The orchestral music was composed by Morris Mamorsky and conducted by Milton Catins. Tom Glazer was the singing narrator. Cantor Robert Siegel sang the liturgical introduction. The production was under the direction of Frank Papp free time to present the eternal light is made available by the National Broadcasting Company and its affiliated independent stations. This weekly program is presented under the auspices of the Jewish Theological Seminary of America. This is NBC, the National Broadcasting Company.